It's not often that it's a brand new instrument day here at Tempest Guitars, but today is such a day, so I'm gonna let you in and show you some of the processes that I do first when I begin an instrument. And I'm starting with the most fundamental part of my build, which is the soundboard. What I'm gonna be doing is showing you the process of creating my guitar rosettes that I make from marbled paper. I'm also gonna talk you through the bracing pattern that I use, and I'll share with you how I create the components that are later going to be glued onto the soundboard. The inlay choices, the materials we use, it all contributes to our first impression of that instrument, both sonically and aesthetically. The bracing pattern I'm using is a standard X brace with the, with the use of a secondary X underneath just to support the lower half of the soundboard. All of the components are generally aimed towards the most important part of the soundboard, which is of course the bridge, sonically anyway. This pattern was actually used on a couple of instruments that my client for this build had tried in person, which was always really nice because a lot of my clients are abroad so they can't actually try instruments, but this one came to the workshop and could try it out. And the one we settled on was this bracing pattern and also same with uh, the top material with moon spruce. Now, if you don't know what moon spruce is, here's a really quick rundown. The concept of moon grown wood has been handed down for years by oral tradition, but now obviously with the likes of the internet, it's a lot less mysterious. Now, obviously the moon impacts a lot of things in life, such as the tides, the migration of various animals. So it's no surprise that the influence extends to other things in the natural world like trees. So let's figuratively go to Switzerland, where I get my moon spruce from and head up into those mountains. Now, moon spruce comes from trees that are felled during colder weather, specifically during the last quarter of the moon's waning. At this point in the year, the sap levels are actually lower in the wood, which falls trees and timber, which is, tends to be drier and fundamentally more stable. Uh, plus the higher altitudes that the moonwood is grown at means that the growing conditions are harsher and therefore the trees grow slower. And if you'll watch my previous videos, uh, you'll, you'll have seen that slower growth provides tighter grain and that is way more desirable for a high-end instrument. As I say, this client of mine tried a moon spruce, two moon spruce instruments and just fell in love with it. So that's what we went with and I think it's gonna be really beautiful. The inlay material that I'm using is a little bit different. It is a beautiful shade of pink and it really speaks to my client's femininity. She's a beautiful singer-songwriter and I think she is going to look beautiful playing this hopefully beautiful instrument. I also don't have any other clients who want pink, so <laughs> I'm really excited. Now you guys are all really smart, so I'm gonna let you sit and enjoy. I'm not gonna narrate what's happening. I'll just add captions where appropriate and I will try and remove the music when there are particularly nice parts of ASMR for you guys to listen to. I'd have it the whole way through, but the dust extractor makes horrendous noises and no one wants to hear that. So these are all my components. I'm missing a bridge plate and my sound hole braces, but they'll come later. So I'm gonna go take a walk outside for my brain and I'm gonna come back and get stuck in. On that note, let's talk about the sponsor for today's video who are AG1. Now I've received a lot of um, very kind comments saying how energized and happy I look at the moment. And that is 
because of AG1. AG1 provide a science-driven formula that you mix with water. It comes in the form of a powder like this. Um, this is my workshop travel pack, which I take to work every day. I made this at the start of the video to drink, and by the time I'd set up my film, I drank it all, so that's annoying, but whatever. Essentially, I found that I was drinking too much coffee and it was impacting my woodworking. Um, as you guys know, if you follow my channel, you're probably woodworkers yourself. Coffee gives you the shakes. This does not give you the shakes. So I wanted to try it out. And subsequently, what I've noticed is uh, I can work longer hours without dropping energy because coffee's annoying. It gives you that initial caffeinated high and then it drops and it's a nightmare if you're trying to work with power tools. A big learning curve with this product is that it was giving me so much energy and I had to kind of work out how to manage that new energy because I've always struggled with energy levels. I am very tired. I need naps. Um, this has been life changing and that's why I'm really, really glad that I'm being sponsored by them. So thank you, AG1. It's also very good for your concentration. It's good for your gut. It's good for everything, really hair, skin, nails, that kind of thing. And look, I'm going to drop a link in the bio to AG1's website. Um, I believe you actually get a free uh, one year supply of vitamin D3 K2 and you'll also get uh, five free travel packs with your first AG1 order. So yeah, make use of that and um, thanks for all the compliments. Feels, feel good. Anyway, back to the video. Thank you. 
bridge plate is just a piece of timber which is about 2.1 mil thick and obviously it's a really important part of the soundboard so I've chosen a quite a lively timber to really support that vibration when the bridge is glued on. I've chosen Paduk, it's one of my favourite tone woods, it has so much clarity and resonance to it while not being as heavy as your typical rosewood. Great material for a bridge plate in my opinion. Over the next couple of days I will glue these components on, essentially it's just a waiting game, just waiting for that glue to cure nicely, gluing on the next part, assembling the puzzle and then it can go onto the rim where it will be glued on and I will start the voicing process. Now a lot of luthiers feel a little bit uncomfortable sharing their own bracing patterns and ultimately that's absolutely fine, that's their decision. I think it's a real shame when people gatekeep their knowledge because ultimately if we can all make the internet especially, which is a such fantastic resource, into a place where we all share knowledge, we're all going to be better craftspeople. And I also believe that the real magic of the instrument is the brand behind it and the people who make it and also things like with the soundboard, obviously the voicing process, the tuning process is very important and just sticking some braces on the back of a guitar top is not the end by any means of the work. Thank you guys so much for watching as per usual, I appreciate it and I really hope you enjoyed this one, it was a bit quieter and a bit more mellow, I'm in that headspace when I'm bracing tops, it's just quite methodical and lovely to get into this zen mindset. If you enjoyed the video, as per usual, I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe and a comment if you are so inclined. I hope to show you this guitar when it's ready and you'll be able to see this bracing pattern and this inlay under finish and yeah. I will see you guys next time, have a wonderful week wherever you are and thanks for watching.